What's going on engineers? Today we're going to automate the game Stick Hero and try to get insanely high scores. But besides that, we're also going to solve a fun problem with Python, so win-win. Also this score right here, I actually got it, it's not fake, and I'm confident that if I wanted to get 100 times that I could. So let's just jump in and see what we can do. So first we got to look at the mechanics of the game. The game's very simple, you got a little ninja looking guy here, and all you do is when you hold the mouse down, it draws a stick in the air. And then when you think it's long enough, you let go of the mouse and it drops across, and hopefully you land it on the pillar. If the stick's too short or the stick's too long, then you lose. So the script you got to build is to somehow figure out the distance between the character and the pillar, and then take that distance and somehow apply it to the exact amount of time to hold the mouse down. So as far as automating the actual long press on the screen, that's pretty straightforward. We can do that with ADB shell. We do ADB shell, input, touch screen, swipe. We can specify the start and end, the start coordinates and then the end coordinates and then specify in milliseconds how long to hold down. So this would make like a, a two second long press. And if we run that, we can see it makes a stick that's way too long and then we lose the game. Of course, the hard part is figuring out the actual delay. It's not always going to be 2,000, so it's not like we can calculate it up front because the distance changes all the time, so it's going to be some value in between. So as I was thinking up of an approach for this, I thought if I could take a screenshot of the screen and then unpack that to a two-dimensional array of pixels, I could take a single row of pixels and analyze those to figure out distance. And the row of pixels I would look at would be somewhere below the ninja. I have the benefit of having the pillar he's standing on is solid black, the pillar we want to go to is solid black, and then the stuff in between is not solid black. So if I could figure out the exact location of the start of the gap, the end of the gap, and then the width of the pillar, then from there I can calculate the relevant values to figure out how long the stick has to be. For this, we're still going to use ADB, but we're going to use Python ADB. So we'll do the proper imports, and then we'll create ourselves a client by supplying the host, which will be localhost, and the port will be, I think, 5037. We'll need to get a list of devices and select ours, so we'll do devices, adb.devices. We'll do a quick check to make sure that there's actually a device there, and then if there is, we'll set device to devices zero. We're just gonna assume that that's gonna be our device. At this point, I just want to verify we have a connection to our device, so I'm going to take the same command that I ran over here, and instead I'm going to run it through Python. So I can do device.shell, and I can specify this command here. And then what we'll do is we will run that, and see if we get something over on the screen, and we do. Great, so we're connected. Our next objective is to get a screenshot of the screen, and fortunately Python ADB makes that really easy. We can do image equals device.screencap, and then we can save that to a file, call it screen.png, open it for writing binary, sf, f.write image. And what this should do is give us an image called screen.png that we can then use later to analyze. So let's just run it again and make sure we get that image. Okay, so I think it worked. Look in our directory here, we got screen.png, so here we go. We got our screenshot of the screen. Now that we have the image, we'll be unpacking that to a two-dimensional array of pixels, and for that, we will be using pillow and numpy. Opening the image with pillow is simple, where we use our image variable, and we'll do image.open, and then screen.png. We'll then take that image, and we'll load it using numpy.array, specify image, and the type will be numpy.uint8. At this point, we'll do a quick print on image, just to kind of see this data. Make sure it's there. So we'll run our program, and we get a long list of things. And this data seems to be consistent with what's on the screen. We have some colored values up here, which represents the top of the screenshot, and then we have black values down here. It's these three numbers that we're concerned with. This is the RGB, and 000 is going to be black. But we don't care about all the data, we just care about one single row. And my screen is going to be 1920 pixels high, so we want row roughly 1400 that should place us just below where the ninja is. So instead of printing everything, let's print image 1400. And this should give us the 1400 and first element in the array. Run it again, see what we get. And once again, the data is mostly consistent. The first pixel is almost black, it's 756, so we'll have to deal with that in our code. And then we have a, a number of elements that are black, that's gonna represent the first pillar. And at the very end, we have a number of light elements. That's gonna be the area after the second pillar. I'm not sure what the fourth number is, I'm assuming it's an alpha value, but we can just ignore that for our purposes. 
So at this point, I'd like to simplify it a little bit by converting it from a NumPy array to just a list of list of pixels without that alpha value. So for this, I can use simple list comprehension. I can do pixels equals i for i in image. And then remember, we're going to take the 1400th one. And then for each i, we'll convert that to a list. And then we'll just take the first three values in that list. Then let's print out pixels and just make sure we got what we want. Run the program. And that looks good. So now we have a full list of the pixel data, and as I scroll through it, I can see that it represents mostly what's on the screen. So it starts with that weird 756 pixel. That must just be a gray line they have on the left. We'll go ahead and remove that. And that's followed up by a series of black, which is going to be the first pillar. And that's followed by a series of light colors. That's going to be the gap. Followed by another series of black, and then more light color. So we have some pretty clear boundaries in this data. So there's three very specific X values that we need. We need the X value where it transitions from solid black to color. And then we need the X value where it transitions from color to black. And then we need the X value where it transitions back to color. From there, some simple math should be able to give us our distance. So we'll start by creating a list called transitions. This is going to hold the values that we need. Then we'll need to loop over each pixel and we're going to need to use enumerate because not only do we need the pixel, we also need the index of the list because the index of the list is going to relate to our X value that we're going to need. So we'll put pixels into here. So now we're going to need the red, green, and blue values from each. So we'll do RGB equals, and then we'll need to use list comprehension again to convert each one into an int. So we'll do int i or i in pixel. And then we're just going to print out the RGB just to make sure that that works fine. Run our program. And everything's good. Now we just have three simple integer values, which we can look at to figure out what's going on here. So our first problem is in that first pixel. Remember, it's not solid black, it's some other color. So rather than just guess and say, okay, it'll be just one pixel or two pixels or maybe zero, the best way I thought to do it would be to just remove or just ignore anything up to the first solid black pixel. So for that, we're going to use a variable called ignore, called call flag. And then the first thing we'll do after we get our pixel values is to check to see if the pixel is not black. And if it is, then skip it. So for that, we'll say if ignore and r plus g plus b does not equal zero, then continue. Once it finally does hit a pixel that is actually solid black, then we can just continue on with our iteration and we'll set ignore to false. That way it doesn't do any more checking after that. Now, as we're seeking through the row of pixels, we're going to be on black and then we're going to be on color and then black again and then color again. But the problem with color is that all the colors are not uniform. They might be different. So we can't just say if the pixel changes from black or it changes from something else back to black, then store that value. We can't do that directly because all the colors are different. So what we're going to have to do is have a variable, something called like black equals true, to store at what point in the row of pixels that we're on. Fortunately, black is always black, so our transition points are just from black to something else, and then from something else back to black according to this variable. So the way it's going to work is we're going to say if black, meaning that we're currently on black, and the sum of RGB is not zero, which means it's a color, then we want to flip black to its opposite. We want to add the current index to transitions. So we'll do dot append i, and then we want to continue our iteration. Now, fortunately, the opposite of this is the exact same. So we're just gonna copy this down, except instead of if black, we're gonna do if not black, and then instead of the sum being not equal to zero, we're gonna do equal to zero. And if all works well, we should be left with exactly three values in here, the start of the cliff, the start of the pillar, and the end pillar. So let's save this, we'll run our program, and hope it works, and it does. So what this says is the first transition is at X position 242, the second transition is at 541, and then the next is at 782. So we can check that over here on our program. So I'm just gonna hold this down just so I can see the number so I'm showing 242 here. If I move it over to the start of the target pillar, I'm seeing about 541. And then if I move it to the end of the pillar, I'm seeing about 782. So all that looks good. 
So we're at an index into transitions, we'll just extract the proper values and name them. So we have three positions now, and it's going to be start, target one, and target two. And that'll represent the uh, start and end of the target equal to transitions. Now we just gotta do a little math. So as far as the gap goes between the start and target one, that's simply going to be gap equals target one minus start. Next we'll want the actual width of the target. So we can get that by just subtracting target two minus target one. Now we need to calculate the actual distance. Now, as far as the distance goes, we want to make the stick long enough to drop right in the center of the target. So the distance is gonna to need to be the full size of the gap plus half of the target. So at this point, let's print out the value of distance and then that way we can go back to our screenshot, we can check our math. So let's run this and see what it tells us for this current screen. It says our distance is 508.5. So we can check this math pretty easily. We'll drag our indicator right to the edge here and I'm showing an X value of 240. If I do 240 plus 508, then I get 748, which should be the value right in between the red here. So if I put my mouse right here, I get 750, that, that's close enough. And last but not least, we actually have to send the long press command to the phone to actually hold it down for the right amount of time. For this, we can use device.shell. We can do input, whoops, input, touch screen, swipe, start, and, and then we need to actually figure out how the distance equates to time. Now I took out a stopwatch on my phone and I, I checked the amount of time it took from when I started holding to when I ended and I found that for a distance of about 300, the stopwatch read about 300 milliseconds. So this makes me think is that the game renders at roughly one pixel per millisecond and I thought that that would be a sensible starting point. Which makes it really easy because that means the distance is also the millisecond delay. So in this case, we'll simply drop the integer value of distance into here. So let's run it once. This will be the first time and hopefully this works. We'll run the program. It's gonna get a distance of 330 and it did it perfectly. So run it a few more times just to see if there's anything to adjust. So 627, that dropped a little far. Let me see if that's just a fluke. Run it again. 602, that dropped a little far. It keeps dropping a little far. So I think we have to apply a coefficient to the distance. Because it's only a little far, we're just going to take a percentage of the total distance by just adjusting distance here. So we'll put this in parentheses and then we will multiply it by say 0.98. That'll be 98% of the distance as milliseconds delay. We'll come back over here, we'll run it again. It's, it's still a little far, let's run it another time. Okay, that one landed perfectly. Run it one more time. Awesome, that's hitting right in the center. Now you gotta keep in mind as well that it's not perfect science. The long press might not be 100% accurate, but it's pretty good. It's hitting it in the center almost every time. Of course, last but not least, we just have to introduce a loop now because we don't want to do this manually every time. So we can simply scroll up here. We'll start at the point where it takes a screenshot. We'll throw a while true here, and then we'll indent everything out one. Then we'll just have to have it sleep. We'll do time.sleep, a sensible amount, maybe 2.5 seconds. Then we'll just need to add that import up here. At this point, we should have our automation completely done. So we're just going to run this and just watch it for a little bit and see if it works. Perfect, that worked. The delay is probably still too long. We could probably shorten that a little bit. Let's do that. So we'll shorten this down to 2.1. And I'll run it again and hopefully that doesn't mess anything up. Okay, got it. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Perfect. Watch it a little bit longer. Perfect again. That was a little far, but it still seems to be working. Yeah, it seems like the shorter it is. Oh, it's gonna be a close one. Oh no, perfect. So the 2.1 was a little fast because what it did is it took the screenshot from the previous screen and applied it to the next screen and then it stopped working. So I think like 2.3, 2.5, somewhere around there is the sweet spot. And I'm pretty sure if you ran it just like this, you would get a score of as long as your device stayed online. 
Automating games is not only a lot of fun, but it's always an interesting challenge because all the games are different and they all have different ways that you would need to automate them. I hope to do more of these in the future and if you have any questions or comments about this video or if you might have a better way of approaching this or maybe a completely different way, then you should definitely let me know or better yet, submit a pull request for the project and maybe I'll merge your version into the GitHub repo. Other than that, uh, expect more of these videos in the future. I really enjoyed doing this, so I'm going to do a few more. And other than that, hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Oh, is it going to get it? Yeah.